here today. The reason why I'm here today is to talk about how you can create safe spaces in your community. Uh, that was one of the actual um, seminars that we did in Creative Camden when they put the, uh, the, the, little, the little marker in your hand and said, you got something to write, write it down. So one of my, my topic was, well, how can we get young people involved in our community, involved in serving and being politically active? And what I realized was at the end of that, we had a lot of different things, you know, saying, yeah, we need more teacher involvement, we need more family involvement, but we really didn't have anything to talk about community responsibility. So what left in my heart was to be able to create safe spaces in our city. So in order to explain to you what a safe space is, I created an acronym and I'm left-handed, so could you do me a favor? Yes, could you get on this I side? Totally do <laughs> so I've created an acronym called SAFE. I love acronyms because they're easy to remember. So what a safe place is, again, it has to be S, safe, secure. You gotta feel comfortable doing that. But to be honest with you, there are places in your city that are safe. You have public parks, you have libraries, you have community centers. It doesn't have to be in your, your home or your front yard. Our Good Vibes group, which I'll explain in a second, meets out of a community store until we were opened up with a lot, with a lot, with the learning center. We had Our Lady of Lords Hospital sponsor us and open up their auditorium for us to do events for us. So there are ways of being able to find safe and secure areas in your, in your environment that you're in now, in your communities that you have now. It has to be an accepting environment. And what I mean by accepting, can you hear me, is that we have to be accepting of diversity and the uniqueness of the people that are here. I am a very conservative person in my politics and my views, but we have a lot of people that are on part of our group that dye their hair pink, they have different things, they have a wide variety of, of, of personal beliefs, but yet we can still come together in our community with a common cause and work together and getting things done for our city. So we have to start with the mind of being accepted. You have to be F, free from judgment and, accept, and, expect, and being able to have a freedom environment of expression. So in our groups that we have, I'm going to tell you about good vibes, we have rap artists, we have singers, we have poets, we have spoken words, we have dancers. These are all people coming from the arts community that are sharing their expression, maybe not in the language that our older generation would like to hear, but they're still having that, that freedom to express themselves without judgment. And then E, an encouraging, equipping, empowering environment. Now, how we created that was through a, good, uh, a, um, a group that we called Good Vibes Open Mic Night. What happened was a young man came together and said his name was Taquan Allen, and he said, I wanted to bring the arts of our young people together. And he tried to do it alone. And then he came up with our other part, which is the Camden store owner, Agina Riggs, and Troy Riggs. And she said, I want to do a team summit type thing. And I want the young people to come together and talk about their issues and develop and move and be able to express themselves on how they feel. And then me, I'm Chair Payam. I love to just empower people. So we had three of us that were coming together individually that if we individually tried to do it, it wouldn't have worked. But we came together as a community and we brought our community with my experience, with her, her, her business, and with Taquan's passion for, for the drama and the arts and his social media because it was not my people that were showing up to these events. It was all these young people that were showing up for these events where we would have an event and we would announce it a week, a week give them a week's notice, and we're like, we don't know who's showing up. And then we look at the room, it's like 40, 50 people there. It's their social media that's doing that. We evolved from a social group, from a, an acting group, to be able to, the, that the forums that were bringing the issues that were in their heart, they were bringing up issues that they could make change on. So we challenged them not to just talk about it, we challenged them to do something about it. So it ended up becoming a group where we were getting young people to become socially active in their community. What I found was unacceptable that these were young people that were 20, 21, 22, 23 years old. If the current mayor of our city was sitting right in front of them, they would not know who he was. And that should not be because that is a voting block that it has needs for this generation. And as much as we talk about how we want to engage millennials and our millennials have no clue of what's going on around them. I said that cannot happen. You know, so we find ways for them to be politically active. We actually